right, in this video, this is part two to the binary clock, and we're going to continue this series by working on this bottom part right here to get this time to show up. You'll notice now that this time is not moving, and that's because inside of this component, I have it set with test on. Notice the test is on. With the test on and 24 hour off, if I come down here to the adjust 12, notice it's 10. I'm skipping over the adjust 24 because we're not in 24 hour time right now. But if I go to adjust minutes, it's showing 26. And then down here at the bottom for adjust seconds, we see 56 seconds. So how do we get this to show up? And then once we get through this part, the next part in the series will actually focus on the circles and getting those circles to light up correctly. So back inside of this component, I have everything inside of a stack group. And inside of that stack group, I have a time at the bottom. Now, all I want you to focus on right now, if you're following this series, is just to create a single stack group for right now. And the stack group we're going to create is the time at the bottom. That's this time that we see right here. Now, this stack group, it is going to be a horizontally centered stack group. You want to set the margin to that H pad. That's going to allow you to pad in between each one of these pieces in this horizontally centered stack group. Go ahead and set the visibility for this stack group. If GV show time, that's an on off switch. So if GV show time is on, we always want to see it. If it's not on, we want to remove it. Now you could do never instead of remove, but by removing it, it will remove that stack group and it'll help keep everything else centered. So if show time is on, we always want to see it. If it's off, we want to remove it. Or you could simply put never. Now that's all for the settings of the stack group itself. So if I come back to the items, I have several overlap groups. This overlap group here, this one here, and these first two are going to be our hours. Then I have a little shape. I'm going to come into each one of these right here in a second. The shape is this little bitty spacer, and it's just simply a square. I have the spacer set there, and I don't think I have any color applied here, no. But you can apply whatever color you want there. The spacer here that I'm talking about, it has the same width as this rectangle, this long line that we see here. It keeps everything nice and vertically set up when we go to set up our circles later in this series. So let's back out of here and let's come back to this first overlap group. Now, inside of this overlap group, I actually have a circle that's completely transparent. Notice the double zero up front. Now, by me putting a circle in here, that circle that is transparent, let me just go ahead and make it show just a little bit so you can see it. That circle has the same size as all of these circles. So as we start increasing the scale or as we increase the padding, the margins in our stack groups, everything stays lined up. So that circle is simply there to keep everything lined up when you start changing the size of things. So I have it transparent. And that's all that circle was serving as. Make sure you set the width of that circle to your circle size. As a matter of fact, this number global here will apply to every single circle, even the transparent ones that we have down here in our time. And when we come and look at the one, two, four, eight, that's a very basic vertical stack group. It actually has transparent circles in that too to keep everything lined up. So let's back out of that circle and let's go to the text. Now this text is going to be a code, not a crazy code. I have the text size set to it. Let me go to its paint. I have it set to our color. So whatever color our lit up circles will be here in ours, these two numbers here will match that as well. Well, what's the code for the text? Back in part one of this series, I mentioned a GV time text global variable. Let's look at GV time real quick. GV time is 10, 26, 56. All I want to do here is use a text converter and I want to cut just the first character. I want to see just the first character in GV time. That's what this code here does. Text converter, cut that text global and only show the first character. That's the one. So that's how I'm getting that one to show up. And what's cool about this, whether our test is on or off, GV time is always going to reflect that. Whether our test is on or off, we'll either see our test time or the actual time, both for 12 hour and 24 hour. Pretty cool. So let's check on that. And now let's just come on over to the zero, the second overlap group here. We have that same circle I mentioned. If I go to its text, 
Now, when you do text converter cut and we're cutting that same text global, if you put two numbers here, let me show you what that's doing. So I'm gonna bring up GV time again. So now we're seeing the zero. This is the second character. When you put two numbers at the end of a text converter cut, it's going to remove the first character and show one character after that. So we're removing the first character and we're showing one character after that. That's why we're seeing the second character, that zero there. Now let me skip ahead because all of these work the same way. Let me come to this five here. So going back to my item, I'm going to come down here to this overlap group right there. You can see it's selected. Go to its text. Let's go to its code now. And let me bring up GV time one more time. So if we want this five to show up like it is right here, we want to cut out the first, second, third. Yes, the colons count as a character. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to remove the first six characters. So TC cut, GV time remove the first six characters and we want to show one character after it. So once we remove one, two, three, four, five, six, we were moved up to that second colon. That's what removing six characters will do. Comma one is going to show one character after that and that's how we're getting to five. I hope that makes sense. And with all of these things set up like this, we have overlap groups for each number because inside of those overlap groups, we have the circles. Again, that keeps everything nice and lined up when it's finally complete. We have our spacers in here just to keep things organized as well and make sure you change the colors for the minutes and for the seconds. And then if we back out of here and we go over to globals now, and if we cut this test back to off, watch the time gets reflected and now we actually have the real time showing up on our binary clock. Cutting that back on. And uh, yeah, there you have it. That's how we get the bottom numbers to show up. In the part three, we will actually focus on getting these circles to light up. And again, emphasizing here the stack groups, the padding, uh, using the circles and the overlap groups. This keeps everything lined up very nicely regardless of what device you're on. Uh, whether it be an 18 by 9, 16 by 9, or 1 million by 52, I don't know, whatever. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.